Hello, this is Dr. Liu. In this video, I will be discussing how to interpolate, uh, what interpolation means in, uh, in mathematics and how we use that in physics. So let me present a background story. So here on the right side, we have some raw data. This is data from a uh, very classic experiment, the Frank Hertz experiment. As you can see, there is some oscillatory uh, data points and uh, our goal is to uh, to find the locations of the dips, the minima here. So what I did was with this dip, I did a quadratic fit, and I calculated the location of this uh, this dip to be right here in the horizontal coordinate, which is a, um, a millivolt of voltage. So it's about 1.55 volts. So unfortunately that is not the number I wanted. So let's look at the left side. So that voltage 1.55 is a control voltage. So I have a, um, a, a electronics box that outputs a voltage between zero and five. And that voltage is the control voltage. So that voltage goes to a um, capital brand power supply. So this particular capital brand power supply, number four, um, when under this control voltage, it'll output this higher voltage. There's a gain roughly 20. As you can see, this whole column calculates the gain and the gain is not constant. So as you output higher and higher control voltages, the, uh, the capital power supply outputs proportionally higher uh, high voltage, VHV, the high voltage but the proportionality keeps changing and uh, and that is a problem so we're actually getting just the control voltage but we want the high voltage that is applied by the capital power supply to the um, to the Frank Hertz tube so here's is our question so we have a number which is a 1.552 and that is this independent variable the control voltage and we want to map it into the de dependent variable, the high voltage. So if you plot these two out, you can see there's almost a linear relationship. You're, um, you're basically cheated by your eyes. Your eyes tend to kind of draw lines in between the dots. So you can't really see this as not exactly a straight line. So if we look at this whole control voltage range, uh, my last data point uh, ends at about 4 volts and that outputs 96 volts so the gain is 23.7 almost 8 so let's keep that in mind and if we go down to only outputting about 1.5 volt control voltage the output is roughly 23 times 23.4 so um, the problem here is is not this range because this range as you can see there's no dip in the data I'm looking for the first dip next one next one and so on so the first dip appears a little beyond 1.5 volt or 1500 millivolts so values or gains above this range all the way up to this will affect how these values are mapped into the high voltages not exactly below so I'm, I'm okay if this is not even 20 times again that's 23 I'm looking at 23.4 to 23.7 or roughly uh, I can say up to 2% of the change of the gain across my uh, entire range so if I allowed this to just happen like this if I just did a trend line here let's display the trend lines formula here so if I just use the trend line and say my gain is 23.95, uh, that's not very good. It's not even close enough to this because of these low gains. So there are some uh, some points that are low, and then as you're drawing a line, it actually warps the line. So number one, it does not really consider that these are not useful because I don't have any dips around this range. I don't have to map these into uh, these ranges into the high voltage but this uh, this fit line it actually anyway it took those numbers and used them as you can see the slope is actually almost 24 so nowhere do we see a, a 24 gain even at the highest voltage of output 
uh, we're just short of uh, the 24 gain. So that's not a very good way to, to go about it. It'll introduce a um, couple percent of uncertainty and that uncertainty could um, make us fail to prove the, the voltage difference between the minima is the expected voltage difference. Okay. So that is the reason. Uh, if this were an introductory physics lab and this is good enough, if this is not an introductory physics lab, it is, if it's an advanced lab or intermediate level lab, we need to consider a bit more carefully. So here is a question. I have a relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable, and and they're only at discrete points in time in well independent variables value because I only dialed in these voltages as control voltages and I got these as the output from the power supply. Even if I could go in between, there will still be point in time where this value, 1.552, is not one of those values I, I tested. So it's going to fall in between some values. In this case, it falls in between these two values, 1.5 2 with uh, 208, that's where 155 is. In between these two, close enough to the 151, but you can't just take the 151's output voltage and pretend that was the 155's corresponding output voltage. So we're looking at um, these two points here, these two points, and uh, these are tested, and we don't have anything in between, and our um, voltage is just a little bit to the right to this orange dot right here. So we're looking at what exactly is going to be the correct um, the correct voltage. And I know that the, um, the fit line did not really help me enough. It's not accurate enough for my level. So I went back and um, this is what I wanted to do is to do interpolation. So first let's just change the data type a little bit. Mm, let's see, I'll go to scatter. I'll have scatter with straight lines in between. I never plot data that way because I know there's nothing in between. But this time is different. What I'm trying to say is we must go in between the data points and uh, we insert a point over here and we want to find what is the, um, the vertical, uh, vertical value. So we'll just pretend that in between these, data, these two data points, there is a straight line. So that's why I plotted out some straight line, some segments in between data points. So this idea of generating, inserting something in between something else, these two data points, is called interpolation. So we're trying to find a value, uh, the dependent variable value of an independent variable value that has not appeared on our data points, data set. So we just interpret, uh, interpolate linearly in this case, in between the data points. So it's almost like the, the game um, connect the dots. You have a bunch of dots, you just connect from one to a hundred, and then you have a shape. So <clears throat> this is the, the same idea. So you'll have a list of these data points, and in between every data point, let me make this bigger. You get to see, <coughs> excuse me, more section like this actually is a little bit more of a pronounced slope. It's actually a, a steeper slope. If you look here, it's a little steeper slope here and then this gradual slope. The slopes are not all the same. Okay, so we're trying to get in between. So um, here's how to do interpolation in Python. So first we need to tell Python the, the list of independent variables that we, um, okay, let's go back one line. Uh, the list of independent variables we have um, used. And then we tell Python the list of dependent variables that map into the independent variable. So then if we give Python another value, which is between uh, um, uh, the, the smallest and the largest independent variable, it will be able to find the section that it needs to, to find. For example, if we give Python a number that is close to this 2500 millivolt or 2.5, and Python will be looking at these numbers because that number 2.5 is between 208 and 20, uh, 258. So it will be using these two values and try to go in between these two values along this exact line 
to find what is the 2.5's uh, dependent variable, roughly a little less than 60 volts. So that is what it's going to do. So it will be going in between the two data points that your number is between, uh, is, is bound, and then it will look along this straight line called linear interpolation to find what vertical value you're supposed to get. So here it is. Let me uh, let me uh, start Python. I also have some uh, some notes that I took. So here's what I need to start. So first I need to define uh, actually import the uh, NumPy, the numerical Python module, as a shorter name NP. This will take some time. It's a large module, and then I will define the independent variable XP. So these are all the numbers that I got from uh, from that that uh, Excel spreadsheet. Start from 0.177, ending with 4.069. So that's that. So I'll just define this in Python. And just hit enter, and uh, the parentheses gives you the um, a basically a collection of numbers. It's a list. Here it is. So then I'll define the independent variable as fp, function of the point. So these are uh, I, these are actually the gains. So let's try something else. Let's try defining not just the gains anymore. Let's try to define these high voltages so that uh, we can directly map a, um, a control voltage to a high voltage, which is our goal. So let's do uh, fp equals, we'll, we'll type this up. We'll type up all these numbers. So it'll take a little while, and I'll check my, uh, my numbers. Okay, let me start checking my numbers. Okay, I'll fix the FP definition and I'll rerun this. And there we go. So at 1.552 volt of control voltage, we're supposed to see uh, 36.41 volt of actual output. So I'm going to update this node as well, uh, which is uh, 36. Or one. 